Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to day 222 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyowa Ruleba. Let's get started. Day 222, August 10th, 2022. 365 days, Bible reading, Old Testament, Second Chronicles 1, 1 to 17, New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6, Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 94, verse 1 to 11. Old Testament and IV version, 2 Chronicles 1, 1 to 19. Solomon asked for wisdom. Solomon, son of David, established himself firmly over his kingdom. For the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Then Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, to the judges and to all the leaders in Israel, the heads of families and Solomon and the whole assembly went to the high place at Gibeon, for God's tent of meeting was there, which Moses the Lord's servant had made in the wilderness. Now David had brought up the ark of God from Kiriath Jearim, to the place he had prepared for it because he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar that Bezalel son of Uri, the son of Hor, had made was in Gibeon in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the assembly inquired of him there. Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord in the tent of meeting and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it that night god appeared to solomon and said to him ask for whatever you want me to give you solomon answered god you have shown great kindness to david my father and have made me king in his place now lord god let your promise to my father david be confirmed for you have made me king over a people who are as numerous as the dust of the earth give me wisdom and knowledge that i may lead this people for who is able to govern this great people of yours god said to solomon since this is your heart desire and you have not asked for wealth possessions or honor nor for the death of your enemies and since you have not asked for a long life but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom i have made you king therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given you and i will also give you wealth possessions and honor such as no king who was before you ever had and none after you will have then solomon went to jerusalem from the high place at gibeon from before the tent of meeting and he reigned over israel Solomon accumulated chariots and horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses, which he kept in the chariot cities and also with him in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones and cedar as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the foothills. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Kew. The royal men merchants purchased them from Q at the current price. They imported a chariot from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. They also exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and of the Arameans. New Testament NIV version 1 Corinthians 6 1-20 lawsuits among believers 
If any of you has a dispute with another, do you dare to take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the Lord's people? Or do you not know that a lot of people will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, do you ask for a ruling from those whose way of life is scorned in the church? I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? But instead, one brother takes another to court, and this in front of unbelievers. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong. And you do this to your brothers and sisters. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Hallelujah. Sexual immorality. I have the right to do anything you see, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything, you say. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her? with her in body for it is said the two will become one flesh but whoever is united with the lord is one with him in spirit free from sexual immorality all other sins a person commits are outside the body but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god you are not your own you were bought at a price therefore honor god with your bodies hallelujah psalms and proverbs psalm 94 verse 1 to 11 the lord is a god who avenges O god who avenges shine forth rise up judge of the earth pay back to the proud what they deserve how long lord will the wicked how long will the wicked be jubilant? They pour out arrogant words, all the evildoers are full of boasting. They crush their people, Lord. They oppress your inheritance. They slay the widow and the foreigner. They murder the fatherless. They say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. Take notice, you senseless ones among the people, you fools, when, you will, be, when will you become wise? Does he who fashion the ear not hear? Does he who form the eye not see? Does he who disciplines nations not punish? Does he who teaches mankind lack knowledge? The Lord knows all human plans. He knows that they are futile. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Please, if you are here and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, Kindly go ahead and repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead, send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith work. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share this link with your friends, family, and loved ones. Let them know what the Lord is doing over here. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles every single day with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Like this video, comment, share. Go ahead right now and share. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today again. It's always a pleasure to have you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.